we start off this little mystery project by um, putting some 10 millimeter brass bar in the ER40 collet chuck and uh, face it off. Now I'm bringing in the center drill so I can get some support with the, the tail stock. So with the DCMT turning tool, um, it gives me a bit more clearance next to the live center. It's quite a big tool for the size of the um, live center. I'm just checking the diameter there just to make sure that my DRO is calibrated correctly, which it is. And then I'll start to machine down the blank dimensions on this component. Just quickly check the part for size. break the edge of that section there. Okay, so this is where we're up to now. Um, I've machined the blank uh, dimensions onto here. Um, I brought the tail stock in for a bit of support because it is a long and flimsy workpiece to work on. Um, so I've got some extra length on here, which I'll, I'll be trimming off um, before the part off and take the part off the machine. Uh, to get rid of the centre mark and then at that point I'll chamfer and file around on to the end but that'll be after I've machined the thread into here so to do that um, I need to mount the uh, the turning tool into a holder centre height so I need to get the tail stock back out of the way for a minute so that I can do that and then I need to put the um, the right change gears into the into the uh, into the gear train Right, so what I've just done there, in case anyone's interested, is I've removed this yoke from the gear train here, which mounts the uh, or the standard set of gears for, for normal turning. And what I'm about to do now is configure this gearbox for screw cutting. So I've removed this gear train here. Um, I'll need to remove this uh, pair of gears from here as well. Um, and then what I'll do then is I'll need to consult the chart that's inside of the um, of the cover of the gearbox. And I need to set the, the position one, which is right down here. So that's in one, and um, we need to be lever position A, which will be over to the left. So with the gearbox running, there we go. Um, that's in one A now. So I just need to put the right gears in here and then 
will be uh, will be up and running. And then that looks to mesh with the tumbler, which is there. So that's ready for a, a test run now. Just tighten this up. Okay, I'm going to bring the camera back around the other way so you can see what's going on at the tool end. So the tool now has a little, I don't know if that's going to come across, um, it now has a a little truncation on there. There we go, we've got there eventually. And um, and that matches the thread form quite well into here. So um, I put this up to the window and uh, to check that that's a good uh, match. So I'll just do a scratch pass now. Um, I've got the uh, a special threading tool that I ground and uh, the pitch looks good and I double checked it with the DRO as well because I I uh, rotated the spindle 360 degrees and the DRO showed the pitch of the, then displayed what the pitch of the thread would be which was 2.5 millimeters so we were bang on there and then I'm just taking the thread to depth now and um, the core diameter of the of the female thread that this needs to fit into um i gauged that by dropping a, a drill the shank of a drill in there and um and that's how i determined what size to machine the uh the thread to just some final touches on on this now just to make sure that it's got the right overall length um, and enough clearance on um, that little um, location shoulder so I'm happy with the thread and uh, so now I'm just machining um, a section on, on the back side now which is um, will form a, an M8 thread here in a minute so I'm just using the parting tool rather than using a right hand tool and a left hand tool um, to get in here with a left handed tool I'd need the work sticking out further than I really want it to um, so it's only brass and the parting tool can um, make cuts um, with small sideways loads so, uh, so that's what I'm doing there, and I'm getting nice square corners in there as well. Quick clean up with a bit of emery, just breaks off, knocks off any little sharp, crusty bits. Um, part about half of the, of the way through, or two thirds of the way through, and I'll just file a, a chamfer on there, and then I'll part it off the rest of the way. So that bit's done apart from. Um, facing up the opposite side now and then I'm going to um, cut an M8 thread onto here where I'm just marking it at black. I didn't need to mark it at black, I don't know why I did. So I'm just running the die down this, uh, this part now just to put the M8 thread on. Very good. Great. Welcome to the channel. 
what you've just seen me machining is uh, this threaded adapter here, um, which I made so that um, it would fit into this little contraption here. So this is a telescopic um, snooker cue extension. Um, it's not very big. Um, it, it's 11 inches uh, collapsed and 14 inches when it's extended. So um, it's only a short extension, but it's it's enough um, for most of the, the shots that, that I need to make uh, when, when the cue ball's down the bottom end of the table. And um, the, um, the thread that normally uh, comes in the end of, of one of these is is this um, this thread here. I'm not sure exactly what the thread is. Um, it's got quite a, a square form to it. Uh, the pitch is one, no, two millimeters, and um, it's a nine millimeter OD. It's a bit chewed up because I I um, I removed it with uh, mole grips, and on the end. Um, there's a an M8 thread, as it turns out, um, and it's got this little shoulder here to to screw up against, and uh, this domed spigot, of course. Um, so, having had a, a look around online, um, there aren't many options for my snooker cue, which is a, a Riley Burwitt or Burwatt, I should say, and um, so I thought, well. I'll I'll make a I'll make something because um, there's there's that many threads around online. It's hard to know which is the right one for my queue, um, and it was an interesting little project. So so I made this, um, and as far as I could tell, it seemed to have kind of a, a pseudo um, Acme thread. Uh, this one is a two point five millimeter pitch. It's an eight millimeter OD. Um, so, uh, what I've done is I've, I've emulated the thread that fits my cue, which is this. Um, I've reverse engineered this to, to make what I needed to fit my cue. Uh, so it fits really well. I've tried it already. So I'm going to show you some of that footage in a minute. Um, but first I'm just going to cut to, um, some measurements that I've taken with a little USB microscope. Uh, just to examine the thread form and make a comparison between this new adapter and the thread form on my um, existing uh, bus extension here. So um, I'll cut to that now and then um, I'll explain a bit more about uh, what we've done. So here's a picture of the microscope set up with the but extension um, on the left and the uh, telescopic extender on the right. And I was trying to get them both um, in the same shot in the microscope, but the microscope doesn't have enough field of view um, and I couldn't get the, uh, the two threads close enough together. So I wasn't able to get them uh, together in the same shot, unfortunately. And here's a close up of those two threads. Um, Obviously, one's a bit dull compared to the other, but um, but there they are. And then in this shot here, um, this is a close-up of the original thread on my existing butt extension. And then um, I brought in the turning tool, which I ground. Um, so that's the, the, the white-looking, silvery, um, kind of truncated... Um, triangular bit at the bottom there so it's it, it's a reasonable approximation the, the picture is not focused that well um, and then in this picture here uh, this is a close-up of the machine thread and um, it would have been ideal like I say to get them uh, both pictured together but uh, one thing I might try and do for future references to um, is to try and draw a graticule on the screen um, which I can um, use to um, make comparative measurements between parts. So that'll be a little bit of uh, playing around to have a look at in the future. So M8 on that side, that's some kind of thread. 
Um, but anyway, it's the closest approximation I could get to um, this Riley thread. So that will screw into there. Like that. And that's under flush, that shoulder, which is good. That's what we want. Right, so that screws into there. Like that. And then to extend it. It's done like that. Uh, so this extends my reach by 14 inches. So like I said before, it's not as long as a proper extender, but when I need to use one of those, then um, I can do a bit for medium length shots that are just longer than what I can reach with a queue on its own, then this will be the ticket. So we'll give it a go tonight, see how we get on. All right, well, a little bit different this one. Um, still machining, but for a slightly different application. Uh, another one of my hobbies, um, trying to get back into snooker. All right, well, I hope that was useful for, for somebody. Um, I couldn't find a lot of information on this subject when I looked online, but anyway, managed to sort it out with my lathe. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for subscribing, and um, we'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.